Okay, we'll do share screen. All right, I'll log into class. Okay, so for the most part, uh, I've noticed that on the discussion boards, we have one participant in the discussion board so far. So I need you guys to catch up on the discussion board. I need you guys to complete it to stay on track. So we are up to week two. So if you click on weekly assignments, you'll see that we are in week two now because it is now the 8th of February. So you should be working on or have completed or you should be looking to complete your week one, okay? Now, since we're up to week two, week two is where we start the discussion board. You had a couple of days to work on it. Um, I would start working on discussion board one. Um, don't wait till the last minute. So I see there's only one participant in discussion board one. Don't wait till the Sunday to try to knock everything out. Uh, contrary to what you might think, it's more difficult to wait later to do the discussion board than earlier. And the primary reason for that is because everyone is already posting or everyone has already made comments and you're trying to figure out, well, how do I make a new comment or a unique comment? Whereas if you're getting in there early, it's a lot easier to, to start making those posts. So um, just gonna quickly go over one more time what we need to do, where we should be. Then we'll get into the lesson the lesson will be quick, no more than 20, 25 minutes tops. I'll probably have us off of here before 2.30, maybe 2.25, 2.27 around them. Um, but no but no, no later than 2.30. So I sent this email out to the Blackboard email out to everyone. This is the 2024 pre-assessment link. So everyone needs to complete this. It's pretty much sort of like a, a survey from um bmcc asking you questions about the class um precursory things so just it's a really quick survey just finish it take it the administration is always um requesting that the students fill this out toward the end of the semester you'll get a second link which will come maybe toward the end of the semester which is sort of a post assessment is asking you questions about how the class was things of that sort so make sure you complete that. Uh, this Zoom meeting, this uh, this is the, the my meeting room. Uh, so you can reuse this link over and over. I will still post an announcement uh, during class, before class, either the day before or the day of. To remind you, we have class, virtual class. If we have class that's gonna be live in person. Uh, we'll go over it on the Zoom call. I'll make sure I go over it personally. And I'm going to also post up this Zoom meeting. I'm going to upload it to YouTube and just post a video. So if there's something you miss, you can just rewatch that. Okay. Okay. So um, lastly, um, if you haven't done so already, please register at Connect. If you're wondering about SimNet, I did not send out the SimNet links yet. Okay. I know last class I said I would send it out. I haven't sent it out yet. I will send out the SimNet links this week so you can register for SimNet. I really want students to catch up on the discussion board, catch up on Connect, do their Connect work. You have the entire semester to work on SimNet. Um, I know when I release everything at one time, it kind of overwhelms the students. So just keep an eye on that. You'll get a Blackboard announcement as well. Okay. Now, before I move forward, uh, does anyone have any, any uh, questions potentially? Uh, I'm okay if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, I mean, I always see your hand being raised. If not, I'll move forward and we'll continue on uh, with our lesson. Go ahead. I have a question. Go ahead. Um, do you, you, don't, you don't need to sh um, show your camera, right? You don't have to show your camera. Uh, I'm not oh, requesting okay. for you to show your camera. Uh, if you want to jump on the meeting and then disappear, Obviously, that's highly unprofessional. Uh, I may ask questions. I may call on you. Don't do that. But I can't force yeah. you. You're, you're you're paying to be here, correct? This is not a. This isn't high school. <laughs> you know, you're paying like a couple of thousand dollars of credit. 
a, a, a class to be here, right? If, if mm -hmm. you, so, you know, uh, I could tell you, you should show your faces, but um, I'm not going to treat you guys like kids. I'm going to treat you guys like adults, right? If there's a job, I'm paying you a salary, fine. Let me see your face because it's my money. It's your money. It's not my money. So yeah. if you want to share your face, go ahead. If you don't, I don't have to. If you're not here and you're not learning and you're not going, I, cause I go over sometimes the things that I go over that help you pass the class is just a random thing I might mention. And, you know, like I was telling you about the test taking, how to take the test, the, the midterm and the final. I was telling you guys about that. Uh, I think someone, someone jumped in the, the popped out. But, you know, I, I was telling you guys how to, how to do that. So if you're not here to listen, then you miss that, right? I gave everyone tips on how to the midterm and final. So yeah. So anyway, whatever. It, it's not. I'm not requiring it. You know, maybe you're you're like my kid is running around behind me. I got two kids running around right now. Um, it, it is it is what it is, right? So maybe you're in, a, in an environment you don't want to show your face. I'm not going to pick on you as long as you're here. It's fine. All right. Yeah. We have any more questions? Checking the list here. Make sure everyone's here. All right, guys. So I'm going to jump into the the material. So we're in week two. We're going to usually be like a week behind in terms of what we do. Uh, but I'll I'll make sure we catch up. Okay. So you still see the sim that link here. I don't know if you guys curiously tried to click on it. If you did try to click on it, it will take you to SimNet. You could sign up, but I have to uh, create the, uh, whoever that is, please mute your mic, whoever just came in. I have to create the, um, I have to make sure that the course that they create is correct. And I have to make sure I can gr drag you guys all into it. So I have to make sure all that's correct first. So you could definitely click in and look at it, but I'll let you guys know when everything's good to go. All right, so let's go to chapter one. I'm gonna pull up the PowerPoint. Now you're looking at my view and there are actual video lessons for this course. It's from a different professor. I chose to hide them because it's not my, my material, okay? If a lot of you wanna look at it or are curious to do it, ask me and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, reveal them. It's just another professor teaching the course. Uh, instead of me meeting up, it's how we're meeting up now, we're having an actual class. It's the professor just talking, recording themselves, giving a lecture and posting a lecture. And that's sort of the, the, the uh, a different way to teach the course is I would pre-record 15 lectures, upload them, and you guys watch the lecture. Um, and that works for a purely online course, but since it's hybrid, uh, we need to meet and be together. So that's one of the reasons why we do that. But if you're curious about it and you, you want to see it, I can always release them and you guys can look at it. It's just uh, a prior professor that taught the class and those are all her videos. She doesn't have every, all videos for everything, but uh, they're not my videos. All right, so let me get this out of the way. So chapter one is going over uh, risk taking, right? And I think the, if your if your main focus is passing the tests, passing the exams, uh, completing the assignments, and you're looking at this, one of the most important things to consider are the definitions. So when you're reading the chapters, you're doing the connect. Connect really prepares you well. Think about the definitions. Whenever you see a definition. Read the definition, memorize it, try to understand it, and that'll help you get to the process, right? I think most of us know what a business is, right? Businesses are, are um, categorized by an activity that is to provide a good or service while operating at a profit. You don't necessarily have to operate at, at a profit to be a business, okay? Your business could be operating at a, at a loss for many years before it becomes profitable. Tesla is an excellent example. Tesla has been operating at a, a loss for 
for many, many, many years because the business is in a startup growth phase and it's in this developmental phase. It took many years for them to build out the technology, create the, the cars, the market. Now people are buying Teslas, they're driving on the road. It's, it, it, it's, it's profitable. But before then, the business was not profitable. Uh, and, and investors are okay because investors know what the timeline of the business is. In fact, Tesla was worth billions of dollars and it was showing losses every year. It wasn't making money. So the def, so the, the reason I'm telling you is because the, the definitions here is, is what you take your test on, right? The truth and reality of business is different. My lectures it will always go over what you should know for the exams, but the lectures are more about real business. It's gonna give you the real deal, the real story about what's going on. Uh, that's why I don't need to talk to you for an hour and a half about certain things. I'm gonna pick up certain points, touch on the reality of it, and we keep it going. The connect is gonna really help hone you for the exams and the material to pass the course. Okay. So it's goods or services. An entrepreneur is someone who risks time and money to start and manage a business. Okay. That's their definition. Go by the book's definition, right? What's an entrepreneur? What's a business? They sell goods and services, operate a profit. Just remember those, those definitions because that's the stuff you'll see on the exam, right? And a lot of it's pretty common sense. So this is important. This is sort of like terminology. In business, you have the word revenue, profit, and loss. I'd like to focus on this because the, the words are important. Revenue is what your business makes. If I sell $100,000 of, of shoes, that's my revenue, right? That doesn't mean I made a profit. What if I paid $150,000 for those shoes, right? If I paid $150,000 for those shoes, but I sold them for $100,000, I lost money. I lost $50,000, but I still made $100,000 in revenue. So revenue is just about, it's just the definition is the money you're making. Wait, but why would you buy $150,000 shoes? Good question, right? Well, why? that's not my goal, right? <laughs> my goal oh, is yeah. Like, my goal is to sell it for 200,000, 300,000. But what if you buy the shoes and no one wants them, right? What, what if you have to overstock? I bought a million dollars of shoes. Now I still have $150,000 of inventory. I can't get rid of it. So you put it on sale for 50% off, right? So um, the revenue is just defining the money you made in that period, right? On a goods or service. The profit is actually exactly what you just said. How much money did I make? Well, I, I, I paid 150,000 for that shipment of shoes. I sold for 100, I, I lost 50,000. So I didn't make a profit, I make a loss, right? So those three terminologies are kind of like really important because when you're reading a financial statement or you're looking at anything business oriented, um, you're looking at those, those words, okay? So I just want to focus on that because um, it's important risk. Risk just pertains to you being able to manage the unknown. That's not the definition there, but I'm telling you that's what risk is, okay? Risk isn't you guessing if you, oh, well, I might win, I might not. Like buying a lottery ticket is risky, right? But you have no control over that. So that's not the type of risk we're talking about, right? That's that's dumb luck. That's guessing, that's, lot, that's lottery. Going to the casino and, and guessing what number falls on what, that's not risk. I mean, it's risky, yes. That's not the type of risk we're talking about. When you talk about business risk, business risk is the fact that you could make money, you could lose money, but you have the ability to manage the risk, manage the opportunity, uh, change the risk by understanding the environment and working hard so that it's now not risky. You know what the market is, you know what the customers are, you know what product is good or bad. So you control risk in the business. And if you don't control risk, you go out of business. So entrepreneurs that are successful, business owners that are successful are constantly trying to manage the risk to make a profit. And that's important. So don't ever think, oh, being a business owner means you have to take risks. That's not what it means. Being a business owner isn't about taking risks. Being a business owner is about understanding those risks and how you manage them. Okay? Now, let's continue. I'm going to skip these are definitions. I'm not saying they're not important, but I'm going to skip them. All right. Stakeholders. Stakeholders are people who are involved in your business. You hear all my kids screaming in the back. That's that's parenting. Uh, <laughs> then you have kids. 
stakeholders are people who are involved in your business. These are people who, who have a stake in your business. Outsourcing are people that are not involved, but you're utilizing their services outside. So for example, if I want to create a website, I can hire a third party company to, to produce and create and host my website. That would be me outsourcing. So that's that's an important understanding of that. Of course, we know about not for profits. I'm not going to touch too much into that. Um, skip that part of it. Let's go down to thirty. So important thing about business is that uh, information technology has really changed and shaped the way we do business. It's caused certain business to go out of business. It's caused certain new businesses to come in. Tesla, for example, I use Tesla as an example. People are driving electric cars on the road and a lot of people love their Tesla. It's got great technology. They don't have to pay for gas. It's clean, it's ecological. Two years from now, excuse me, one year from now, uh, BMW is gonna be releasing a hydrogen car. Totally different technology, totally different everything. So you guys, you literally have like the last decade or almost two decades of, of innovating to create electric cars. And now that just might go out the window. <laughs> you, you have hydrogen cars, it's totally different. So, um, you know, business itself is always evolving and changing. And when you're going into business and you're thinking about business, it's important to understand that the businesses that you think are really successful or really important today may not be that way tomorrow. So you may have a business that's like um, Kodak. I don't know if you guys know, remember, or alive when Kodak existed, uh, but Kodak film was all pre-digital. used to take photographs. It was a Polaroid. It was a chemical process from the camera. That was the only way you took photos back then. And, you know, Kodak was a hundred million, maybe the equivalent of being a billion dollar industry today. Uh, Kodak was, you know, one of the largest, biggest uh, film producers out there uh, for photographs. You need to take a photograph for a family, you bought Kodak film. That's how it was. Didn't it technology? die when, like, digital came out? Exactly. That's what, exactly. So once digital yeah. came out, no one needed to use And it took a while because digital technology was not good enough to replicate. Yeah, first. But you know what the funny thing is? Kodak had the money. Kodak could have bought all the technology. They could have bought all the businesses out. They could have bought yeah, out. It's, it's kind of like, it was kind of like a blockbuster type of thing where like they had the chance to buy it, but they they just didn't innovate. Like it probably was like the old head CEOs that didn't want to change. They thought this new, this new technology is not going to work. You see this all the time where like older people don't understand something. So they think it's as bad. And then that's how they lose money. Blockbuster. I heard Blockbuster could have bought Netflix for like, I think it was like a hundred million when they could have bought Netflix 10 times back then. You're right. And then now Netflix is worth way more than they are. Like I don't think it does anymore either. I think there's like one Blockbuster that they like opened just for like memorabilia, I think it's called, you know? You're right. So, so, so not only are you correct, um, you're also touching on a very, very, very important point that businesses innovate, the businesses that don't innovate, businesses that don't um, change fail. And a lot of the businesses now that are still around, like Microsoft, for example, technology has changed tremendously since Microsoft came to business. Even Apple, like you see how they have the vision. I mean, I probably, that kind of looks a little dystopian to me, but probably my kids are going to see that as like a regular thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like you can see how even though the companies that are here now, they're kind of forcing innovation. Like back then it was like, they weren't really forcing innovation. It was just like whatever new company comes out. But now you see like the companies that want to stay, they kind of forcefully innovate. Like you see a new phone come out every year when they don't really need to have a new phone every year. You know what I'm saying? So, so it's so like, so that so that there's a there's a terminology for that, but we'll get into another another class. And what that's saying is that um, innovation stifled because of the need to maintain a profit. And there's something called uh, it's on the top of my head, but uh, it's where is where you you innovate minimally or you create product that breaks purposely. Uh, plus called planned obsolescence. That's it. So you plan to make a product obsolete by 
incrementally innovating a product to ensure that you can maximize profit. It's actually kind of like controllers too. Like they kind of make controllers for like like games, like you know, consoles. They make them break purposely. Like like if you buy a regular controller, it'll probably last you around six months to a year. If you don't really use your controller, it'll probably last you a year. But if you play like let's say every day or every two days, it's gonna not it's not gonna last you more than six months. All right. So so uh we got ten minutes left in the meeting, which is good. Uh just there's a countdown there. So I'll give you guys uh a heads up on that. But, you know, when I was when I was a little kid, we played Atari, right? NES, the old the the old school stuff. Uh, those controllers still work. If I take out if I take out a, a dusty controller, if I cracked it open and, and refurbished it, which I actually would know how to do because my dad was um, he he did he was an electrician when he was younger, not the electrician that goes and fixes your lights, but like a. a like VCRs, which you guys know about. Uh, you know, he did IT, he did technology, he, you know, he 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 innovated through the decades. Uh, but you know, I learned a thing or two. Those things still work. And those controllers, I remember my brother would like slam them and break them and they still worked. Right now, my kid throws uh throws a brick, a charger brick at my television and it cracks and fractures, okay? This is what it is. So stuff is made to break, you know, like I buy an iPhone charger wire and it's just sitting on the wall. No one's doing anything to it. It's just sitting in the freaking wall. And then a year later, it's it's like, it's, it's kind of broken. It's not working. It's not charging, right? They do that on purpose, to your point. Because if that iPhone charger is still sitting there 10 years later, why would you buy a new iPhone? charger right you're happy with it so they do this to, to deliberately create new revenue new profits the problem though is very wasteful it's not sustainable you're making more junk you're making more plastic you're making more materials uh you're fueling an industry that doesn't need to be there so from the sustainability of our of our the health of our earth of our globe it's a bad thing but for profits is a good thing but then at the same time is it really helping society and helping each other grow and develop as a community if we're stifling innovation because we want to make a profit. So that my opinion, my opinion very strongly is that things, things should not be taken. Like if you're running a business, you have to think profit driven, but if you're thinking about the ecology of, of humanity as a whole, and we're not thinking about profits, we're not thinking about um, money, we're thinking about people, you, me, our children, our children's children, the world beyond us 100 years from now, the thought process is very different. And how does business tie into who we are as a people? It becomes very different. The science of business is the science of the organization of people to create products and services for the betterment of society. And the studying and understanding of how to manage, structure, create, innovate, product services and organizations is sort of the science of business but when isn't you a business at the end of the day just um like the way you start a business right in another word it would be kind of like money money in like like you selling a service or product but is it business can only be business if you're gaining money well that, that was that that was our our very first definition in the beginning where we yeah. went over the definition of a business right so what I told you earlier on is there's there's two definitions. There's what I'm telling you and what you need to understand as far as um, class is concerned, right? So when you're mm. looking at, at class, this is the definition of a business right here. This is what you need to know. This is what you need to understand, okay? As far as what I'm trying to explain to you, though, is that what we're discussing, the discourse and conversation we're having right now is the problems inherent with capitalism and the, the problem inherent with business is that when you're operating at a profit, you get these behaviors. You're making products. You get consumed. That, you get consumed by just more money, more money in. Yes. And you kind so, of make irrational decisions where it could affect people or even environments or just even the way people live at the end of the day. Absolutely. So that's why that's why I, I I'm highlighting the word operating in a profit, 
I'm highlighting the concept of, of, a, of a business and the components of a business and how the profit portion is really a separate component from the science of what it is to run and operate a business. And that profit component really deeply changes the motivations of we as people, as humans, and how a business operates, how it innovates and changes the world around us and shapes us. This is not an exam, by the way. So this is just the definition I'm highlighting, that's what you need to remember. So I'm just letting you know. But when you think about all these things in particular, it's, it's showing you the way the world is versus the way maybe it should be or could be. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't like buying, I don't like buying stuff and having it break on me. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> right? No one wants to go and buy a $30 cord from iPhone, from Apple again because it broke, right? I don't want to yeah. buy a, a $500 flat screen TV because my kid threw something at it, right? And then you got to buy a, a, a protective case to cover it. You know, like who wants to do that? And then, Think about all the work and labor it took to make that TV. The plastic is not going to get recycled. It's going to sit and and never, ever, ever. Yeah, I heard of a it. story. It was like where there was like a fire, like, you know, like a fire department building, like where they have the, the fire trucks. Yeah. They had like a light bulb that lasted like 70 years or something like that. And it was never changed. It was like this orange or like yellowish light bulb that Still never working. was changed still working for 70 years and i'm like okay so why is my light bulb breaking technology 100 years ago Better almost but we have something called led lights that yeah they are brighter but they don't last as long if you They're start not. thinking about it why 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 is that because it's, it's like it's not like we don't have the technology you know because 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 they make more money off of you getting you to rebuy it 10 times in a in a in, a, in your lifetime versus yeah. one time so that it's, it's exactly. all profit driven so you know one I just want to uh, add to the point of what you said is that commercial, there, there's a product line of products called commercial products, okay? The word's commercial. Commercial products are products that are designed not to break easy. So if you go into a restaurant, you see a coffee machine, it's not the Keurig machine or the, or the Nest whatever machine you buy from Macy's or an Amazon. A commercial machine is like 20 times more expensive because that's what it costs to produce something that doesn't break down. But it could do hundreds of thousands of, of, of coffees in a month and it'll still keep working. So where you do see products that last, it's in the commercial industry because commercial industries have to, the, you know, they can't have their coffee machine be down because then you can't get coffee that day, right? So so uh, entrepreneurs pay a premium to have a product, a service, a product or service that doesn't fail them. But when you look at the price, you, you know, it's not a $50 machine. It could be a couple of thousand dollars. You could be gone buying like an $8,000 machine to make coffee, which is crazy, or cappuccino or something, but it won't break. You, 20 years later, it's still working. So you kind of see what you just mentioned, the technology of those things still exist, but you'll see the product will apply more so to that. So I missed your little thing here. <laughs> You know what? It, it, you know, that's a good question. Why is the McDonald's ice cream machine break now? Look, that's up to their manufacturer. I'm sure if someone wanted to make a machine that doesn't break down, that's fine. I don't know about those machines. I, I heard know. it was because it's not that they can't fix it. It's more of so McDonald's. It's it's kind of like what kind of what NASA does, where like they used to make everything in house and it used to be cheaper, and they used to build their own things. But because of you know funding or whatever, but McDonald's made a contract with like yeah. this certain machine like company like ice cream maker and they're not allowed to let's say if it breaks they're not allowed to fix it or refill the ice or whatever only that machine only the person that like operates the machine could do that so for example there could be like maybe ice got stuck or maybe they even need to refill something um or oil gonna, change, whatever it is for the machine now. you can't, you can't you do it and i'm yeah. gonna stop you now because we got to jump off the call uh, but class, uh, we're going to be here same time uh, next week, Thursday, 2 o'clock on our Zoom call. And um, take care, everybody. I'm going to end the call now, okay? Have a good day. You too. Take care, everybody.